everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are in the beautiful island of La Palma, Spain, very popular with astronomers, professional and amateur alike, astrophotographers such as myself. Today I will be demonstrating a new feature of the ZWOC star, which is mosaic mode. <coughs> this little telescope has become extremely popular amongst amateur astronomers and some astrophotographers for no reason other than it is compact and very affordable. The reason it is so compact is because it is a very small structure with an aperture of 50 millimeters and a focal length of just 250 millimeters, yet it is still able to get a large magnification because the sensor mounted on it is a very small one with tiny pixels. As a result of using a very small sensor, essentially you're applying this large crop factor. So even though you have a tiny focal length and just a small compact telescope, you're able to essentially zoom into small areas of the sky. If you would like to understand more about how crop vectors and field of view with different sensors and focal lengths work, I have done a very in-depth video on this. I will link that right here. Today, let's have a look at what we can achieve with this and some natural result of this large crop factor. As I mentioned, this little telescope has a tiny sensor, which is essentially what we would use for a planetary camera. Very small pixels, very small sensor diagonal. This is great for a lot of small objects in the sky, like galaxies, smaller nebulosities, and so on. However, this has a caveat, which is every time you try to image something that is larger than this truly tiny area of the sky, you have an issue because you're not able to image it in one. Now, this problem is not unique to these smart telescopes, especially not to the sea star. This is a very common problem that everyone's going to run into eventually with whatever telescope sensor combination they have. With regular or traditional setups, the solution for this is quite clear. This is essentially what we call doing mosaics. A mosaic is very similar to when you do landscape photography and you want to do a panorama. So you want to cover a larger area of the horizon by taking different frames, different tiles, you put them next to each other and then you stitch them together in post-processing. We do the same thing in the sky with traditional telescope. We do a mosaic, we do different panels, we expose for multiple hours for each each panel, we stack them together, and then we stitch them together in post-processing. This works a little differently for these smart telescopes for multiple reasons, and so far it has not been possible to do this with the ZWOC star natively. There are some other smart telescopes on the market that have offered this possibility, but with the ZWO it was not a possibility to do this natively, so what people have been doing is try to do the same process that I just described manually. For example, you're trying to image a large area of the sky, such as the Cygnus loop, which is really huge in the sky for something like this that can only cover like a ninth of it. So people would do these panels, stack them together separately, and then try to stitch them together in post-processing. And then again, there were some more tech-savvy people who have developed some proprietary software solutions to automate this whole process. But now with the new native mosaic feature, we can do this all directly in the application of the C-Star. So today I will be trying that out and demonstrating how to use that. I would like to mention already that mosaic mode, since you're covering a larger area of the sky with the same optics, it's going to take longer if we want to achieve a higher resolution image. The C-Star does have an integrated battery, but the battery life is only about five hours. So that is way too short to cover, but the shorter of the nights and especially if you're gonna want to do a mosaic you will take many hours. I recommend getting something like this if you ever want to travel. This is 100 watt hours uh, which is the maximum that you can take on any commercial flight internationally. So we are just waiting for the sun to go down. It's promising to be another beautiful night. I'm very much looking forward to trying this out. I am a beta tester so this is currently not on the app store version but I believe it is coming out very soon. So I'm happy to share with you how how, how this works and what I like about it and maybe what I don't like about that that much. Let's get into starting the mosaic. Uh, without further ado, I will be opening the C-Star app, connect to the telescope. We are connected. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open the arm so that it can actually start pointing up. It is now slowly opening up the arm. 
I will be going into stargazing mode so that I can move this arm up more manually. I will be skipping the first part, so I just have manual control of the telescope. You can see that this is completely out of focus, so I will just be clicking on autofocus. This way it will be able to do the plate solving later on. The autofocus has been completed, now it is time for me to start uh, looking for an object. Some of these very popular objects that people are wanting to do mosaics on include the Cygnus Loop or the Andromeda Galaxy. Tonight I'm gonna go for the latter one. I will just search for the Andromeda Galaxy in uh, the app. I will be just searching for M31. This brings up the native field of view of the Andromeda Galaxy and you can see that I can only fit like maybe a third or a quarter of it natively. This is why we're wanting to do a mosaic on this. If I go into the framing mode, I have two sets of controls. I have the magnification and I have the rotation. Magnification essentially lets me set up the size of the mosaic. So this is what is going to then determine the number of panels and how the panels are arranged. Here, I'm just gonna go all the way out to the maximum field of view that I can get. As you can see, it doesn't give me an option to change the aspect ratio of the image, which is very strange because you're gonna put um, panels next to each other. You could do that in any possible aspect ratio. There's no reason to be forced to use this aspect ratio, but today ZWO is not letting us choose anything else. The maximum resolution, which they call three times, essentially this is a three by three mosaic. So it's gonna be nine times the size of the native field of view. And then the next control is on the rotation. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that I can see it better and rotate it so that it sits in a very traditional framing of the Andromeda galaxy. Actually, I'm even gonna go for something a tiny bit smaller here. It's better if I cut out this bright star because that would not look nice at the edge of the screen, but that is going to look much nicer. I'm gonna go with this framing. With all this setup, I'm gonna hit go to and the telescope should um, go straight onto my object. It is now initializing on my target. You can see that on the screen. I think I'm just gonna go out of the way of the telescope here. It's better if I stand behind it. It is just now taking a second. It tells you on the screen it is doing a horizontal calibration in case I didn't manage to level the telescope. That has succeeded now. It is going straight onto my object now. That is still rising. It's gonna be passing right above our heads. So it is a good target for tonight. What this is gonna do now, now that it will start shooting, um, essentially it is not that different from when it's doing regular imaging, so 10 second images. However, after it took a couple of pictures of a certain area of the sky, it will just do another go to and move to a slightly different area of the sky. It is working in a different way compared to how we do regular mosaics where we would do one panel and then the next panel and then the next panel next to each other. Here it works in a different way because we don't have entirely different panels. We just have many, many, many panels that are overlapping with one another. So that means that we're gonna be stacking them, the entire set of many, many images over an imaginary grid that is the final target mosaic and we're gonna be integrating them on top of one another. We have found our target, we're doing another autofocus and then we are ready to go. Okay, so we have our first image where we can see that this is the core of the galaxy. You can see that it's not really the entire rectangle. It is a rounded rectangle. They have cut off the corners. I would not be surprised if it was because of the lack of flat frames. They probably have a small amount of vignetting even though it is a very small sensor. I'm almost sure that is why they do it um, this way. We avoid having sharp corners that are darker. We are currently at 40 seconds. So we are going to be shooting this first panel for a while. And then we'll move on to the next panel that has quite a bit of an overlap with this first panel. And then we will just slowly move around to finally get to the field of view that we want to have. I mentioned that we are constrained to short exposure times because of the field rotation due to the altazimuth tracking system. However, we still do have field rotation over a longer period of time, which when you're shooting a single image, the traditional way with this telescope, if you were to shoot for 12 hours, you would see that your field of view would rotate 
a whole entire 180 degrees and you would just have one circle in the middle that is covered in every single image and everything else would just have less data especially in the corners this is a bit different here because as you are rotating the subframes for each of these mini panels while some of the corners are hanging out from your first panel that will automatically be part of the second panel that you're going to do next from but this is actually a good thing because you are throwing away a bit less data we can see that we have started downloading the next batch of images and you see here that the field of view is starting to enlarge it will be shooting all night. I will be leaving it alone, especially turning off that red light because it is shining straight into it. And tomorrow morning, uh, we will see what comes out. Good morning. I have left the telescope out all night. It was about eight hours of pure imaging time and I have the results throughout the night. I took some screenshots to, to show you how the field of the mosaic is enlarging. Let's have a look at those. The first one, we essentially just have 26 images, then we have 584 images stacked, then we have 695 images, and then finally we have 1,090 images. If we do some calculations, 1,090 images of 10 seconds gives us about three hours of pure imaging time. This is the amount of imaging time we have actually managed together over nearly nine hours, which makes you think that it is probably not a very efficient process because while at the beginning, when you just start out the center of the mosaic, it is um, stacking them as you go. As the mosaic enlarges, it takes more processing power to align the images, and then it takes the software much longer to stack. So you end up with an average of 30 seconds to take and then stack a 10 second image, which means that you're essentially throwing away two thirds of your imaging time. This is still in beta testing. I think that this may as well be part of the reason why the whole mosaics solution hasn't been pushed out into the production version of the application yet because honestly throwing away two-thirds of your imaging time is unacceptable. I'm really hopeful that they are gonna improve this. Let's have a look at the image that came out. This is a stack that comes out the entire field of view that I was planning to capture was not even finished after these eight hours and something of imaging time. You see that two of the corners are still missing which I'm not extremely worried about because this is something that I can crop. So this is the image that comes straight out of the telescope and then I wanted to compare it to one that I can stack from scratch. Now registering and uh, stacking these mosaic images is not as straightforward as doing it with the individual images because none of the raw files can be used as reference for the registration. So what I recommend using is you get the stack that you get out of the C-Star, use that as reference for the registration, and then you register all the frames on top of that. So what you're going to want to do is you debayer all the raw images. In case you're using PixInsight, you're going to want to set your reference image here which will be the stack that came out of Seastar. Add all your target images which will have to be the already debayered files and then if you want to make sure that you register as many of the frames as possible you have to enable compute intersections always. This will allow the software to only use parts of the reference frame as the part that it's going to try to register each light frame onto and this will make it much more easy for you to get everything Everything registered. Once you have those images, you do a regular integration process with your favorite settings. What I really recommend is that you don't try to use local normalization because you don't have a true reference for you to local normalize onto. And also I actually ended up using no weighting for the images because I don't want to weight different parts of the mosaic against one another. With that I ended up with this image. As you can see the shape of the image is very similar to the one that comes out of the C star. I have processed both images to the best of my ability. I wanted to see what was possible so first I processed the ones stacked by myself. Once you color calibrate and especially if you remove the stars to see the background better, you will see these little squares or, or little corners of the individual frames. And that is because we are not using calibration frames. In my opinion, even if you're using such a small sensor, it would be best to use flat frames. Now the sister of course takes dark frames, but that's not what is gonna make your images look better because these are very modern sensors and we are taking very short exposures. So the amount of dark current that you have is not the issue here. The problem is the vignette 
lighting that you have that becomes very apparent when you're doing a mosaic as such. So you're always going to have these overlaps of the center of one image versus the corner of another image and then it just has a different illumination profile. So I have worked out a way to use uh, calibration frames for smart telescope images. Stay tuned for that. I'm preparing a video on that as well. But for today, let's just have a look at what you can do with the images that come out straight from the telescope. Once you remove these obvious uh, gradients in the background, you see it's not perfect, but it is something that you can realistically work with especially considering the tiny amount of integration time that went into this. One thing to consider here, putting together the two things I mentioned before, one being that it only used up a third of the time I spent taking images, and the second that the maximum field of view you can achieve is about nine times the native field of view, and we're obviously only imaging one ninth of that part of the sky at once. If you take an entire night and you image for nine hours, that means if you're only using a third of that time, you're imaging for an effective three hours and for each part of the sky that is only a one ninth of that time that gives you approximately 20 minutes per part of the sky that was exposed that is extremely short so i think that this has to be considered when we're evaluating the results this is also something you should keep in mind if you're planning to do mosaics with a smart telescope using this method it works it is possible but it is extremely inefficient whereas if you were to image the central part of the andromeda galaxy here with the native field of view in nine hours you would get nine hours of integration time which being a very very bright object even with the small optics of the sea star you could get a decent image here we have 20 minutes of imaging time for the same area of the sky that is very little even for such a bright object let's compare the results i uh, processed the stack that i created i also processed the stack that came out of the sea star directly to the best of my ability the only kind of setting uh, that i copied from my own stack it was that i registered so that they would have the exact same crop so that they would be very easy to compare we can see that they had already applied some sort of corrections on the images that went into the stack that came out of the sea star we already kind of saw this uh, yesterday when we started imaging that the corners were kind of rounded down and at the time i said well clearly this is because they want to avoid the vignetting that is due to the lack of flat frames and clearly it has addressed that issue because we don't see those obvious corners here that we see on our own stack however it has created this very strange artifact where the core of the galaxy somehow is already brighter and there's this increased contrast between the dust lanes and the center of the galaxy that just makes it look like an overprocessed image and it came out like this i mean this is not a raw image that we can work with this is a processed image so we're always going to have an inferior result if we're working on it this way by the way i'm using pixinsight but i'm aware that there is a script that you can download also for serial so if you prefer that one somebody has written a script for specifically this use case that should also help with this process i highly recommend doing your own processing because you can see that the results are just much better if you ever did live stacking with any software or if you are using the c star or any other smart telescope you may have seen that if you have a satellite or a plane or something that goes wrong in the first few frames that is gonna stay there and that is because the software is not restacking all the frames every time you take a new frame it just kind of adds the new one to the stack meaning you will never be able to reject those first outliers if they were there in the first place if this happens when you're just shooting a single target then obviously if it happens in the first few frames you can always just restart it without losing a lot and if it happens later it will automatically be rejected now what we have here is that we keep moving to different areas of the sky this process kind of restarts so if you take a new area of the sky and then you have a satellite in the first few frames it will not be rejected and it will stay there in the final image and this is why we have the stack that came out of the sea star I can see multiple satellite trails and this is also something that you can remove by just stacking the frames yourself. Obviously this is the depending on your personal taste and how you like to process. In my opinion, the version that was stacked by myself is infinitely better because I was able to get a more natural looking result out of it. So if you're gonna wanna do these mosaics with the C-Star, I highly recommend doing your own stacks and 
processing it yourself. However, I would really keep in mind uh, this extreme inefficiency that I've already mentioned. So one part of it comes from the inefficiency of the current software that you're only taking about a third of the time you spent exposed. I expect that this will be fixed soon. However, the part where you are only imaging one ninth of your desired field of view at once, that will remain there. So you have to calculate that if you want to have the same signal to noise ratio as you do on your single images, if you want to have the large mosaic with the nice resolution and the large area of the sky, you have to image for nine times as long. And if you are already imaging a whole night for a single image, this means imaging for nine nights, and that is just extremely long. So suppose that you will take nine nights to take a very nice large resolution image. Keep in mind that you will have thousands upon thousands of these files. You will need some processing power or time and a lot of storage to be able to do this processing yourself. If you want to do mosaics over multiple nights, I think you anyway don't really have a choice but to do the processing yourself because currently the software is not letting you continue a previous stack that you had started. I think that this is something that they could enable if they wanted to and I think that that would make it nicer. However, currently we're stuck with what is provided and I think that if you want and if you invest some time and effort, you're able to get a decent result out of it. However, you need to spend a lot more time integrating and quite some time also on the post-processing compared to a regular single frame image. So in conclusion, I think that this new mosaic feature is very welcome for all users. In terms of the cost to value ratio, I think the C-Star is still a very valid option for somebody that wants to start out electronically assisted astronomy. So this gives them a way to also image larger areas of the sky, which I think is very welcome. I'm sure that the feature will get better over time. However, all those things that I mentioned before are something that you definitely need to consider before taking these really large mosaics. I would honestly try to keep the area to the bare minimum that you want to end up with in order to maximize the actual amount of time that you can spend imaging for each part of that mosaic. I hope that you like this and I do hope that the software will be pushed out to production so that everyone can try this out. Stay tuned because as I mentioned before I have an upcoming video on doing calibration frames for the sea star and for other smart telescopes in general. I think that that will help make also these mosaic images a lot better when you stack them yourself and if you have tried out the mosaic uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this is a feature that will be used a lot? Are you going to use it or are you just gonna keep using it with the narrow field of view where it is very simple and you can just work with the stack that comes straight out of the sea star? Thank you very much for your attention. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the Space Koala channel. Thank you very much and clear skies.